those are friends of mine and I. We uh, started as freshman year, we made the bottom of college. Uh, you know, that was no real intention of starting a company, but Joe was, you know, I was interested in it, you know, we to college for the first time. Um, but yeah, you know, over time as our friendship developed, we, we started to think about, you know, starting this. We always talked about it, but we're never really sure what to do. Uh, our junior year, we actually started to the be advertising business, which is sort of a longer story of itself. Uh, but basically, we, we did a small deal where we bought the right to uh, advertise on behalf and, and sold, you know, sold advertising. We got to it. We got to call the We didn't want to do a campaign. We just put two and two together. That was the first thing we did. Uh, we did this one together. And so, by, by the end of the school, we, you know, had never been one really sustainable business and we didn't really know anything about advertising. I saw it as the advertising. Uh, and so, you know, we just shelved that, went back to school, and, uh, Graduated, I went on to become an investment banker, like Porter Rich. I went to law school. And uh, we, about a year later, we were trying to figure out, you know, what to do next. I was extremely unhappy in my banking job. Um, and, you know, Rich was really so much fun for me because the best place in the world for him. Yeah, so we started talking about, about startups and about uh, ideas we had. Uh, at the time, we were just planning a bachelor party for his older brother. And I was the first one to come to the monkey house uh, with a bunch of friends. And, you know, we were facing a problem of collecting money. We were both sort of thinking about it independently, and we ended up complaining to each other. And uh, the rest of the sort of history, you know, we started thinking about it. Um, eventually, we were going to quit our job, we were going to drop out of school, and we worked out full time. Um, so, if you jump to the next slide, just take that thing. I was just producing a bunch of networks at NYU. We were involved in big Twitter jobs, which we did quite much, and then our boss did. And we started up to work. And we spent the first couple of months, you know, sort of sketching up product ideas, building prototypes. We had a fair amount of banking and processing relationships we had to build in order to build the kind of company. And it was sort of like the right mix of desperation with our previous career path and sort of targeting that we thought we could start a company a little bit naively and you know, a little bit of money that I had from banking. It's sort of dumb enough to kind of spark things to get us going. Um, so we could no longer afford to live in Dutton and Boston to have the money, so we moved across the Tobin Bridge to Revere, Massachusetts, um, which I don't know if anyone is familiar with Boston, but Revere is not the only neighborhood. Uh, it's basically the least expensive place you can find within probably Hundred square miles or so. So we moved in there um, and he sort of got to work both prototypes and then kept working. Um, and so we thought that we could just sort of jump into it, you know, put a little prototype, bring some money, and we'd be off to the radio. But if you go to the next slide, uh, we were wrong. And uh, basically, we were, you know, we were in Boston, we ran out of money pretty quickly. It was all of a sudden the quote unquote worst economy of the Great Depression. And it's really one thing that gets us alive, and that was Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist gave us these things. One was sort of odd jobs to pay rent. So I was tutoring at the end of the day. I was doing web consulting. Uh, and Rich tutored the LSAT, uh, which is the law school admission test. And you know, there were certain times when really, you know, we'd be like 500 bucks short to pay rent that month. So we'd get on the Fox Wiz, which is this game, you know, I've had boxes, and we'd play poker for 12 hours. And uh, we had to do that twice a week. But uh, we actually ended up winning both times, so it was fairly lucky. But, uh, but we were back there, we had to do to get by. So I guess the thing that I can't wait to create the little box was that we decided in the very beginning we were going to buy a dog, and that dog was going to be the company, and the company asset. Uh, and that would sort of be like our mascot and kind of a symbol that we were going to see this thing through. Because, you know, if we decided to make the dog, we'd pay for whatever reason. It's going to be this really awkward situation where we tried to figure out what to do with the dog. So, uh, so, because we're getting a little bit of money and a dog. But the entire time we basically tried to get the next slide, we ended up losing 50 grand in the TV that we put it up in the last month because we spent the entire time trying to raise the money. Um, and what we really should focus on with our product and, you know, Building a good product, getting good traction. They said we put our free PowerPoint and sort of hit the road and know a bunch of VCs and just wasted a ton of time. Uh, now we're fortunate in this situation we're in where we're out 
lot of money and figure out what to do next. Uh, we applied for a program called Y Combinator. So we got to Y Combinator is a deep engaged investor uh, located in Mount Deep, California. And I'm not sure how much we were accepted. Um, so Y Combinator does, they give you $20,000 and they make you relocate to the Mount Deep, Colorado. So um, we got the car. We drove literally three days later after we had accepted. And before it was on the way, we took the drill and had a straight shot. Um, and we left going in a roundabout to Colorado very briefly. But other than that, I was able to straight through. And we went to the review of California, which is Mopita, um, and then the Eastern New York Day, which is another really expensive place to live. Uh, we ended up hiring a few guys to help us out. So we had uh, our first engineer to go to the line. Um, so it's rich, me, Carl, uh, and Eric. Uh, I call Eric Green, but he really does a lot of good enjoyed full time. We got into it to our company here. Um, and so we just dramatically changed the company in a couple of ways. Not only do we have uh, sort of more, more people to help us do something, but also, um, my company are really put like, heavy focus on building a product instead of raising money. So we have to change our entire objective. And it went from trying to figure out how to raise. $500,000 and it went to what you had to build a product that people want and that they will use. Uh, so it was really like the most pivotal three months we've been by. It's probably the three most productive months of my entire life. We did we launched ourselves into how to be aiming to the right code and get ready to use their user product. And to the end, it was like August of 2009 at this point. Um, we had a product that had the data, we had users, and we were sort of off the road. Uh, and everything was so changing at that point. You know, like, you know, we were able to, we were on the raise in our series day, which was told about $1.8 million. Uh, it was led by Ivan and Axel, who was a company out here at the Metro Road. And we were fortunate to have some phenomenal angels, which he did as well. Max Lachim, the founder of PayPal. Rob Conway, who's sort of a prolific angel investor out here. A guy like Dave McClure. Um, and so it turned out to be a phenomenal uh, investment round. Um, that gave us sort of another launch pad to basically launch our product publicly. Um, and it's on March of this year we launched publicly. Uh, we wanted to recruit this guy by the name of Rasmus Weirdor to join our team. Uh, Rasmus was the inventor of PhD, so he's a really strong technical person. Um, and then based on all the momentum when we launched in March of this year, uh, we raised our Series B this summer. Uh, it was seven and a half million dollars led by our capital partners uh, with August Capital participating as well. Um, so, you know, if you kind of look back on the company's history, uh, you know, I try to kind of piece together some of them. And, you know, raising money is not exactly a measure of success. So I hesitate to really dish out too much of that. Um, because, you know, uh, we'll see sort of where we take go in the next two years. Take out. Then we can sort of check if my advice is solid or not. But I guess for now, um, the next slide where it says build a great product. Basically, we really struggled for the first six to eight months. And it was only once we stopped to earn money and really focused on building a great product that everything started clicking. Uh, we did that. We were like, able to spend three months of that kind of focus. We were able to raise close to $2 million, which gave us an end launch pad. And we put in to focus that product. We were raised over $7.5 million. And we got a bunch of great traction. Um, but it was really that, like, the moment where we the California and said, okay, we're just going to write code for three months and build a phenomenal product. And then, you know, and so you really have to ignore all the distractions. Like, you can spend months, years meeting with investors, worrying about accounting, worrying about lawyers. You know, there's sort of all this, like, operational, administrative stuff that can distract you. But at the end of the day, what really matters is building a phenomenal product. So, you know, I built a startup project here that was a completely fabricated benchmark. But, uh, I think the graphics are just a bit of what I'm saying. Um, if you guys can buy the title agent, I'll say it again, I said it came from the company. Um, so it was pretty, I mean, like, eight months is a long time to go without, um, without any money or any paycheck and, you know, it's like a little traction on the company ground. But we did it, we had this dog ready, and uh, we were good friends, and so it sort of kept us, you know, focused and kept us sort of dedicated to the cause because a lot of distractions, right? You know, I think you guys went to business school, or it's the thing I go to law school, or we're looking for jobs, we're going to make bread, or a friend that makes fun of us. Uh, and so I think 
you know, having a founder that you really trust and having a sort of a reason to stay the course uh, is, you know, in, incredibly, incredibly valuable. And you know that, you know, you and your partners are really focused on building a great company and are in for the long run. Um, was one thing that was really valuable for me. So I, I was really happy I did my co founder really well. Uh, and I would definitely advise that as well. Um, so you know, right. One thing that we did well too is we were, you know, incredibly cheap. We lived in like the cheapest neighborhood and the cheapest house we could find. Um, when I was a banker, I, you know, at the time, all my uh, co workers, you know, we were here at school, we were getting paid pretty well. Um, we, you know, everyone was buying brand new cars. And, you know, personally, I don't really think that the BMW 3 Series is like this aspirational life goal that everyone should live up to. Uh, and whereas I think a lot of people are working fine and work a professional job, try to buy these like really nice entry level luxury cars. Uh, and I just don't think that's what I kind of think there's a buyer to. So I, like, I really encourage people to try to like think about, you know, where they want to take their career in 10 years and starting a company is, is on that roadmap. Um, to think about, you know, how you can save money and preserve cash because it takes very little money to serve that thing to go. Usually, if you can live cheaply, you can survive for, you know, maybe not for a long time to, you know, you know, a very long time. It takes a long time to go, a lot of code that can be read. Um, so I can build a job today in my MTGA, but I can't break. It's just broke 190,000 miles. Um, and it's, you know, it's a thing that, uh, it's just, I mean, it takes my burn low. Um, allows me to you know, store cash for a rainy day and you know, allows me to you know, keep our burns and come very well too. So, uh, I have a confession, and that is that I was one of the massive guys that I brought to college, uh, like the Eagle. And well, at the time, I thought it was a fun way to like meet cheerleaders and go to games for free. But uh, in hindsight, I ended up meeting a, a guy by the name of Peter Bell. The general partner at, at Highland and ended up being their Series B investor. Um, and so I guess my conclusion is that you know, you need to be building relationships for the long run. Um, and like, you just wake up one day, you know, I don't know, for a million bucks. Uh, you, you know, they need to know and trust you. And so I think it's worth getting going and getting really rich with their company. Maybe don't, don't focus your time on fundraising, but always be open to meeting the right people. Uh, getting them involved in your company and know you can think of that later. Uh, and after that, too, the next slide is about the community. Uh, and we did a, a pretty good job of that early on. Uh, we got tons of users involved in our product development process. My co founder, Rich, is not that So when we were sort of head down for four months, right, good. Uh, Rich was sort of out shaking the tree, getting fraternity, getting for these, uh, whoever we could really bringing people over for barbecue, getting to play their product, getting feedback. Uh, so when we finally did launch publicly, we had this phase of really passionate, engaged users that were able to go spread the product. Uh, it really helps you out with develop a good product if you can iterate rapidly and constant user feedback. Uh, so that was I think we did pretty well too. Yeah. So along with that is uh, the next slide. We see some great guys going around. Uh, basically, an entrepreneur is you know, selling all the time. You know, you're selling investors, you're selling to what you try to recruit employees, you're selling to users. Um, and I guess at the very beginning of the company, all you really have is a vision and your ability to sell it. I mean, you have to do like really old, crappy, unscalable things to, to win customers. Um, you know, if you have to go knock on doors, if you're trying to get to sign up, you know, that, that's what you have to do to get the initial feedback to improve your product to the point where. You know, people will hear about it and it'll, it'll, it'll spread. But in the beginning, you start to do whatever you can to get your folks into you. We would wish you to go to college campuses. We would just do whatever we had to do to get, you know, any amount of research. That was the um, thing. So, uh, if you go to the last slide, uh, you know, if you're in a volley, you're in closing. Um, if you guys would like to, you know, our story, like what we have today, I really appreciate it. If you, if you liked it on Facebook or Facebook, or 